Hey everybody, this is uh, part two of, this, of the first section of the second module, so module two, lesson one, uh, comparing and modeling uh, algebraic expressions. And this is part two. They asked us to split this up into two days. So suppose x and y, so we're going to compare right here, are, are uh, give the populations of two different cities and where x is greater than y. Compare the expressions and tell which of the given pairs is greater. All right, when you see these like this, and SAT test makers, you guys, they love these kind of questions. They make them vague. Well, let's make it a real problem by assigning X and Y some random numbers. So I'm just going to pretend like they're 2 and 1. Those are nice small numbers to deal with. And since 2 is greater than 1, it will satisfy this inequality right here. So we'll plug in X equal 2, Y equal 1, X equal 2 here, 2 and 1, and then 1 and 2, and then we'll just compare which one's greater that way, and that should do it. Okay, so here x plus y is going to be 2 plus 1, or 3. 2 times x is 2 times 2, which is 4. Since 4 is greater than 3, then 2x is going to be the greater uh, expression right there. Okay, made it easy. Made it real-life problem right there. Your book doesn't suggest it. They talk some hogwash on doing some other stuff, which is fine, you guys. It just... It takes more to explain, and it's just more vague, you guys. But now it's real with this. So I'll put in 2 and 1, and put in 1 and 2 right there, okay? So we get 2 over 1 and 1 over 2. Well, 2 is bigger than 1 half, you guys. So we got 2 from this one. So, so x over y is going to be greater than y over x, okay? So just make it a real problem, okay? Same thing. They're going to ask you to do the same thing with these two guys right here. So it's same directions and everything. And I just, again, since x is greater than y, now this is just to trick you a little bit, you guys. y is greater than 0. Look at this. It says, uh, given uh, the, these popula uh, x and y are populations of the two different cities right there. So, well, you can't have um, uh, zero people in a city right there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a city. Okay, so that's all this means right there. It's just bigger than zero. It's, it's something in there. So x is greater than y. So I'll let 2 and 1 again be x and y. Okay, so here, here's 2, here's 2 and 1. Here's 2 and 1 and 2. Okay, x is 2, y is 1. x is 2. Okay, here's x equal 2, y equal 1. x equal 2, y equal 1. That's all this says over here. All right, let's do this side first over here. Okay, so here I get uh, 2 over 3. Here I get 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. This is like 0.6. So two-thirds is less than three halves, so that means this one's less than this one. So this one's the greater of the two, okay? So it's asking which one's greater. Okay, over here, two, two plus one is three, two plus one is three, so we get two times three, and we get three squared. Okay, two times three is uh, six, and three squared is nine. Okay, and since six is less than nine, then we got nine from this one, so the x plus y squared is greater. Typically, when you square something, it's greater, unless you're dealing with fractions, you guys. Fractions, uh, when you square it, it actually becomes a smaller number, like one half when you square one half is one fourth. But you can't have one half of a person. These are populations, so I know they're whole numbers right here, okay? All right, so here's some math phrases with algebraic expressions, okay? We'll fill this chart in. You might see uh, these kind of phrases uh, for addition. You might see, and you've seen them before, you guys, the sum of, sum means addition, added to, plus, more than, increased by, a total of, all together. Actually, the word and is, is addition also, okay? So, uh, for example, a number that's increased by 2, okay? Well, that's increased by, this is an addition sign, okay? That's the same as the sum of n and 2, which is just n plus 2. All right, here's some subtraction, uh, subtraction uh, words. Less than, minus, subtracted from. The difference is a big one right there. Take away, taken away, reduced by. You guys have heard all those. So, for example, uh, the difference of a number and 3, or 3 less than a number. When it's written like this, 3 less than a number, 3 comes second right here. Those both equal n minus 3. Okay, multiplication, times, multiplied, product, percent of, the word of in math means, if you just see of, that typically means multiplication. So, so here's an example, the product of 0.6 and a number. Okay, 0.6 is the same as 60%. Remember, if we move the decimal over two places to the left, it becomes 0.6. So 60% of means times, this of means times, 60% of a number. Okay, both of those are the same as 0.6n. Okay, pretty cool. Okay, and then division, um, divided by, uh, division of, quotient is the big one on that one, divided into ratio. A ratio we talked about in one of the earlier lessons. Uh, that just means division, you guys. So the quotient of a number in 5, that means a number divided by 5. Okay, that's what this says, a number divided by 5. 
or n divided by 5, or fraction, this is the same, n over 5 says n divided by 5, okay? All right, so write an algebraic expression to model the given context and give answers in simplest radical form, or simplest form, sorry, I'm thinking ahead. Okay, so the price of an item plus 6% sales tax. Okay, so we're going to do, do price of an item and we're going to add 6% sales tax. All right, since we don't know the price, we'll just call it P for price, okay, plus 6% of P. Okay, so 6% is 0 0.06. Remember, you move the decimal back one, two places when you change a percent to a decimal. Okay, this is 1P plus 0 0.06P, which is 1.06p, okay? So uh, the algebraic expression would be p plus 0.06p or 1.06p. Think about this, you guys. It's 100% of the price plus 6% of the sales tax. So it's 106%. That's what this says, 106%, okay? 106% of p. Anyways, so the same thing right here, you guys. The price of a car plus 8.5% sales tax, okay? So the price of a car plus 8.5 cents percent sales tax. This, if we moved it two places, 1, 2, 0.085. I think I let that be P again, you guys. Yeah. Okay, so we get um, uh, P plus 0.085P or 1.085P. Okay, piece of cake, huh? All right, here's another one. The number, this one's a little tricky, you guys. The number of gallons of water in a tank that already has 300 gallons in it, so it's something plus 300 because it already has 300 gallons in it, after being filled at 35 gallons per minute, per M minutes, okay? So for 35 gallons for each M minutes would be 35 M. So it's going to be the 300 plus the 35 gallons for each minute right here, okay? Started with 300 and we're going to add 35 gallons. That's a big uh, uh, water tank right there. Actually, they're a lot bigger than that, so... Okay, here's another one. The original price P of an item less a discount of 15%. Well, what do you think less a discount means? That means subtraction. So if we just do um, uh, P minus 15%, so P minus uh, 0.15P, and this is 1P minus 50, or 0 0.15 is going to get us 0.85P. Uh, think about it, you guys. If you're taking 15% off an item, you have 85% of it left, and that's what this says right here. Okay, all right, piece of cake. All right, so when given an algebraic expression involving subtraction, why is it best to rewrite the expression using addition before identifying the terms? Well, the terms, when we started uh, the last lesson, you guys, the one right before this, terms are, uh, um, are the, are the uh, things that are separated by addition signs. So subtraction is the same as addition, is adding the negative terms. So the terms are divide, uh, defined as the parts that are being added together. So when you have a subtraction, it's easier to do uh, adding the opposite, and then whatever those numbers are that we're adding, those are the terms. Remember that from the last lesson? How do we interpret algebraic expressions in terms of their context? Well, we identify the individual parts of the expression and then we identify their relationship to each other. We've been doing that all along in these lessons. So how do we simplify algebraic expressions? Well, we did that already by combining the like terms, okay? All right, piece of cake. If you're in my class, I would probably assign you that. Take care, you guys. Hope it helps.